in this video, I want to introduce a class of neuronal models called conductance-based models, uh, which are widely uh, influential and uh, used quite a lot in uh, computational neuroscience uh, today. And if you uh, use this term loosely, uh, we've already actually been talking about a conductance-based model. So if you remember a while back, I showed this uh, diagram um, and this electrical circuit to model the activity of a passive neuronal membrane uh, with some current source perhaps coming from an electrode. And this qualifies as a conductance-based model, um, although it's somewhat of a simple conductance-based model, and people probably wouldn't call this a conductance-based model just because it's so simple, but if you look at it on a technical level, it qualifies. Um, in the conductance-based models that we're going to start talking about, um, we're going to have active uh, ionic currents that have ion channels that open and close in a voltage-dependent manner. In this simple model that we've been talking about, the resistance is fixed, and because of that, you know, most people might not call this a conductance-based model, but, you know, it's sort of semantics, and if you look at conductance-based models, they're basically a very simple extension of what we've been talking about. So the defining feature of a conductance-based model is that the total amount of current uh, crossing the neuronal membrane is equal to the uh, capacitive current and the ionic current. And we've seen this before. So the ionic current is uh, the current passing over uh, this resistor here. And the capacitive current obviously uh, comes, you know, deals with this part of the circuit. And in a previous video, I derived that the capacitive current um, can be described as uh, C D V D T. So we derived this from the uh, law of capacitance. Uh, and we also derived, uh, using Ohm's law, that the ionic current, or the current flowing across the resistor, um, in what we were talking about previously, uh, is equal to 1 over uh, the resistance times uh, the voltage drop across that resistor, or the change in voltage across that resistor. And here, um, I'm going to note that this 1 over R term, uh, you can actually, is often re-expressed as uh, G. Uh, where G is the conductance. So conductance is uh, just a, um, it, it's a feature of uh, electrical circuits um, that's the reciprocal of the resistance. So if something has a very high resistance, that means that it has a low conductance because it's not a very good conductor. It's very difficult for electrical current to pass through uh, that resistor. Whereas if you have a low resistor, uh, that would have very high conductance. So it's just convenient for us to think about um, ionic currents in terms of a conductance rather than a resistance because um, we don't want to have this fraction here. So um, we often re-express we often re-express this as a G uh, times the voltage difference just just for simplicity. And this is where um, we get the terminology of a conductance based model is this uh, term G here which refers to uh, the conductance. So if we assume that uh, we aren't injecting any current into the cell then the sum of the current across the membrane uh, is going to be zero. So the capacitive current um, has to be equal and opposite to the ionic current. So in this case, you would have C D V D T equals uh, the opposite, equal and opposite of the ionic current. Now, uh, before this video, we've basically been considering what happens if we only have one resistor in the membrane, or um, one, I guess, set of ion channels in the membrane. But in actual neurons, there's many different ion channels with different properties that pass different uh, ionic currents. So what a conductance-based model essentially does is it says, okay, well, I'm going to, rather than just looking at one of these um, ionic conductances, I'm, you can have many conductances. So the total ionic current is the sum um, of the many individual uh, currents, many individual um, ionic conductances. So you can sum over uh, many uh, ionic currents. And each uh, ionic current, as we've already talked about, is basically going to follow um, this form here, where E is called the equilibrium potential for that current, and that's equal to the Nernst uh, equation for that ion that uh, this particular conductance is passing, or this particular conductance is passing, sorry. Um, and we're going to sum over many of these, so you can have a summation symbol um, over many conductances I. Each one of them has their own uh, conductance value and their own uh, equilibrium potential. So this is essentially what a conductance-based model is then. So I've written out here um, the summation over many different ionic currents, each of which uh, is contributing to the overall uh, change in membrane potential. Uh, and actually, I forgot an I here. 
um, each current can have its own equilibrium potential. And if you will notice, I got rid of this negative sign and instead just uh, switched the order of uh, this difference here. So this is a famous example of a conductance-based uh, neuron model. And in fact, uh, I think the consensus is that this was the first published uh, conductance-based neuron model. And you can see uh, that it looks very similar to the circuit that I was presenting before. In fact, uh, with the exception of these two, uh, these two components of the system, it's exactly the same. So here, this is, the, uh, this is just a resistor, and this is the resting uh, membrane potential. And you still have the capacitance. So, uh, these parts that I've circled in purple are exactly what uh, a passive membrane is, and this um, usually is referred to as the leak conductance. Uh, so the leak conductance sort of it has um, all the it, it basically lumps together things like the sodium uh, potassium uh, ATPase pump and uh, the uh, just leak uh, channel ion channels that are always open, and <clears throat> the components in green are are active uh, conductances. And you'll notice that there's these resistors have a little arrow uh, through them, and that arrow means that those resistors uh, have a variable resistance, and they actually change in a voltage-dependent manner. Um, so in the next couple videos, I'll actually talk about how you can simulate um, a variable resistor like this, or ion channels that are opening and closing. But if you forget about that for a little bit, uh, you should be able to realize that this uh, circuit is a very simple extension of what we've been talking about so far. All we're doing is we're just adding more of these components here. So this is, for example, a potassium uh, conductance. This is a sodium conductance. So this sort of uh, would is a proxy for all the sodium channels uh, within a neuron, and this would be a proxy for all the potassium channels in a neuron. And of course, actual neurons have many different subtypes of potassium channels that have different properties and subtypes of sodium channels. And then there's also calcium channels and chloride channels and mixed uh, channels that uh, mixed channels that pass both sodium and potassium, for example. So if you want to add complexity to this model, it's actually very easy. You just add uh, another uh, another component to the circuit, and uh, we'll see if I can draw it in here. You would just add another resistor and another uh, battery, and that's it. Um, you can make this either a variable resistor or not, depending on uh, the kind of channel that you have. And uh, yeah, so, so that's pretty much it. And in the next video, I will go into... Uh, talking about uh, this particular conductance-based model, the Hodgkin-Huxley uh, model of the squid giant axon. And it should be, if you understand what, uh, what we've been talking about so far, we're just adding a little bit more complexity onto it, and uh, it's really not all that difficult. And these sort of models actually do really cool things. So this model, for example, actually can produce uh, action uh, potentials which a passive membrane uh, just obviously will not do for obvious reasons. It just approaches a steady state value. This, uh, you know, this model can spike repeatedly or it can be silent and if you input uh, a, small, a small amount of uh, injected current then you can produce um, an action potential and then it will just stay silent after that. So for different parameters this model can do very interesting behaviors, things that um, are perhaps more interesting and uh, relate to uh, the behavior of actual neurons uh, a little bit better. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next few videos.